in 2024, we're done taking things personally, and we're talking about it right after this. Welcome to the Black Girl Bravado Podcast, your weekly fix for all things mental health and wellness. I'm Brittany. And I'm Germany. And not only are we besties, but we're your besties. You heard me right. It's homegirl vibes here. Get ready for the girls to dish the real, the raw, and the fucking funny. And listen, we may drag you, but it's always in love. Let's start the show, cuties. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. Welcome, beloveds, to the second week in January. Second week. Now, before we get too far into the show, I want to remind y'all that we are on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You can watch us live. Well, not live, but you can watch us. In color. Period. You can watch us. You can watch us, period. If you go to our YouTube, which is down in the show notes. And yeah, let's get our subscribers up. We have a goal to reach. What's the goal? 10,000. Period. Okay, you can be one of 10,000. 10,000 by the middle of the year. Let's get it. That's easy. That's yeah. light work for y'all. Listen, we've done it before. We can do it again. Yeah. So, anywho. How, how are you feeling? feeling? <laughs> how are you feeling? <laughs> how are you feeling today? I'm still thriving off the new energy. I feel like it's going to carry me for a good month. Hopefully longer. You, I know, but you know, it really did. Yeah, yeah. Then the regular year, the year starts setting in. It's giving okay we're here i'm um just overall feeling excited mm -hmm. um i've been back on my wellness girly journey you know like really moving my body consistently i've been really doing my walks every morning yeah. i've been on a couple of hikes come on um and those have been good i've just been feeling like an outdoor girly you know the other day i was driving from ulta the Ulta over there um, by your house. Mm -hmm. And girl, I was just driving through because it took me this little way. And I was thinking, damn, this is a really beautiful community. I'm glad that this is where my shit is. You yeah. know, the things, I really love it here. I be thinking that as I'm walking too, I'm like, this is really a blessing to like live in this beautiful community mm -hmm. and be able to like do my wellness things and take my walks in this neighborhood. It's so good for my mindset. And I've mentioned in the previous episode about being in environments that spark my growth. And um, I'm in one of them. Yeah. I'm in one of them. Yeah, I feel the same. So I just felt so grateful, <coughs> filled with gratitude yesterday when I was leaving Ulta getting my shit. I'm like, this neighborhood is just top two and it's not two. Yeah. I, I feel the same. Andres and I were just talking about that, like how grateful that we are for like where we live and just being in the energy. I'm like, I really feel at peace. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is the most peaceful I felt in so long. Like, not even being funny. <laughs> but Because, girl, this girl was shaking and fucking stirred, baby. And in her own I'm dwelling. Calm. Now I'm calm. I'm relaxed. I don't feel anxious. I'm driving to work. I have a great, beautiful commute. Like, I get to see the sunrise from my apartment. Like, just watching that little bit of dawn. Mm -hmm. Or is it dusk? Dawn. 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 The little bit of dawn. Dusk is up. dusk is night. At night, yeah. We took Gatsby on a nice little walk. There's a tennis club near my my place, which I'm gonna join. I think I saw that. I'm gonna join that tennis club. You are. Mm -hmm, I am. Cute. But we took Gatsby up there and let him run, and we were like running, and it's just so nice. So I do. I'm echoing your sentiments that I fucking love it over there. I'm like, I am just right back where I need to. It be. had me go like the the highway one route. Oh, PCH to my house. PCH? Well, it's 25th Street. You know, mm, like, yeah, going yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're not you, telling y'all where we live. No, 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 no. When you drive along the water. Yeah. I wasn't going to name. Yeah, you know, name names. Right. 25th. Everybody got a 25th. Yeah. Everybody got yeah. a 25th. Yeah. But when you drive along the water. Yeah. I was just like, damn. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank it's so you. nice. It's so yeah. nice. We are very blessed. So nice. And that's that a that's important to count your blessings. Even if you know you want more, you desired something different. Right where you are, there's something to be grateful for. For sure. In the midst. In the midst. In the middle of it. Thankful for where I am because I could be pounding the pavement somewhere else. Girl. But I'm, not. but I'm not. When I tell you the jungle, when I tell you the concrete jungle. I'm not in a concrete jungle. You better be lucky. You better be happy. I am. Because you. Mm -hmm. I love it here. It's a different there. energy, beloved. I love it there. So we're here back with y'all. We are, we are in our being that girl series yeah it's giving that girl it's giving that girl yeah it's giving that girl this month we are just focusing on the different areas and ways 
that we can really become that girl Mm -hmm. for this new year and beyond. Last week, we talked about stepping into our new era and reinventing ourselves. And I really enjoyed that episode. And I'm so excited about just embodying the best parts of myself. And this week, we're talking about taking things personally. Mm. Now, you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with being that girl? And it has a lot to do with it. Yeah. It has a lot to do with it. Okay? Mm-hmm, now, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's normal. Let me it's, come right in hot. It's, it's normal. normal. It's normal for us to not be big fans of <clears throat> criticism or behaviors, things that people do where it's like, oh, it's normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem the comes. Wrong way. Right. Things that may feel offensive, we get it. It's like, okay, what was that about? But mm-hmm. if you find that your feelings are hurt very often by things that other people do, you're probably prone to taking things personally. And that can be a big hindrance in just getting through your day-to-day life, yeah. achieving your goals, navigating through this world. Yeah. Because people are going to do things. Yeah. But we have the power to control how we how we take it. Yeah. How we take it. And it can be draining. It can be draining. You know, our self-esteem, it shouldn't, but it, a lot of times we put it, we, it heavily depends on what other people feel about us, say about us. So imagine how draining it is when you are allowing somebody the power to influence how you feel about yourself, you know, mm-hmm. dictate your self-esteem, dictate your state of mind, dictate your feelings, your emotions, how you're going to respond to a circumstance or a situation. It's exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting. And I think it's just important for us to learn when something is like intentional, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, or just, or just something that we're perceiving as yeah. a slight, yeah, you know, yeah. It takes that self awareness again, or just awareness of like what's really going on, yeah. because it when we're taking things personal all the time, it's like we're assuming that people are out to harm us emotionally. It's like we have in our mind that whoever's doing the, committing these offenses has yeah. a personal vendetta yeah. against us. And, I, and we don't like that. We don't like that. But imagine mm-hmm. feeling like everybody is, that's everybody. Yeah. Everybody has your name on their list of people that they going to f*** with. Like, okay, I'm <laughs> Germany. I'm f***ing with Germany. And there's, <laughs> there's a difference. Yeah. There's a difference between being reflective mm-hmm. and constantly taking like, you know, things personally taking things personally one is productive one is productive it's like oh yeah. I'm, I'm noticing that this person is doing this or this happened and another is oh, a hindrance <laughs> another is a hindrance okay and really we think about it when we decenter ourselves we talked a lot about decentering ourselves last year when we decenter ourselves people have a ton of reasons for doing a ton of things that probably don't have anything to do with you they do you are not their on their upbringing, their day. I mean, yeah, like for you to really think that you are the sole reason that someone is responding in this particular way and that they're out to get you or that this this personal vendetta, it really takes for you to sit back and say, am I really that important? No tea, no shade about, you know, we are all important. We've talked about the spotlight effect. Yeah. Here. You know, are we that important? This happens to me when I'm driving and I've been checking myself. I think we do that because we're, constantly projecting our stories on other people Mm -hmm. i think that's why we take a lot of things personal because we're projecting we're walking around being big in big projecting energy and a lot of taking things personally has so much to do with the stories that we tell ourselves versus the stories that other people are telling us we're creating these stories in our mind mm-hmm. that everybody's focused on us, that everybody's out to get us, that everybody might be more worried about us than they are. Mm-hmm. We're telling ourselves these stories, which is why when we when people behave a certain way, it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, I, I know that's, I you're affirming the story that I've been telling myself, really. It's, uh, assumptions are, are very funny, too, though. Like how we make assumptions about certain things. I, my colleague was sharing a story and I thought that it was so interesting the way that he phrased what assumptions do you think I'm making? <laughs> he was talking like about... He was saying that to you? 
he, or he was just talking. He was telling me a story, but oh. he, he shared, what assumptions do you think that I'm making when he was talking to the person? And I'm like, that's a good way to spin it. like <laughs> So that they can say what the, they can say something. So it's just kind of like, you are making me feel a particular way. I am making assumptions, but what do you think they are? Yeah. You know, it's so funny. It's so funny. My mom used to always say assumptions make an ass, ass out, out of you and, and me, me, baby. That's an old one. When That's she used one to that say that, I'm it. like, I should have really took that to heart. It does, though. We can't assume. We can't take things personally. It stunts our growth. And it keeps us just in this place of bullshit. Assumptions are a little cocky, too. Because mm. when we're assuming, we're basically feeling like we know everything. Like, we know so much because when you're making that assumption without even inquiring with the other party, it's like, oh, I know that's what you were doing. Yeah, it's a you fact. Know? It's a fendi fact. I'm so, I'm so confident in this that I know that's exactly what's going on. And that can be cocky because, no, you don't know. You actually don't You don't know. know. Yeah. You yeah. don't. Let's get into some signs that you might be taking things too personally. Mm. You depend on the approval of other people to make you happy. Ugh. Hate it. Hate it, but it's true. Been there. It's true. A lot of us are looking for validation from the people mm. around us, mm -mm. from the people on social media, the mm -hmm. people that we're following to mm -hmm. tell us that, yes, you're doing a good job. Yes, you're on the right track. Yes, you know, what you're saying and doing matters. And when we rely on the approval of other people, then again, we put our happiness, our self-worth, our self-esteem, our confidence in the hands of somebody it does not belong in. It only belongs in your hands. When we don't get it, what are we doing? Taking it personal. Why aren't they showing up? Why aren't exactly. they showing support? Why aren't they, why aren't they, why they liking they my story? Like why, why they didn't they... say nothing? Why they? You guys. Yeah. Stop it right then and there. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Another sign that you may be taking things too personally is that you apologize needlessly and you're a people pleaser. Mm. Apologizing for things that you don't even need to be apologizing for are constantly trying to people please, appease people, mm. and bend your back. Yeah, now it's broken. So that other things are, so that other people are comfortable. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. You know, I realize there's some people pleaser in me. Mm. When I was on my walk, a thought came to me that I would share. I wrote a note. Notes are a powerful app. Because. <laughs> they are powerful app. Yeah. They are, especially when you're on the go and I can't get to my journal. Yeah. I have my notes. But the part of the people pleaser in me is like wanting to be perceived a certain way. Yeah. And like wanting to come across as a good person. But I realize that some of that coming across as a good person now that I've been self sacrificing. So I said, I am a good person because I treat people with kindness, care, and consideration. Being a good person isn't self sacrificing to make others comfortable. I'm done. Please, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> you hear me? I hear you. I love that you had that revelation. It just came to me. I said, is this the way that people be saying shit yes. come to them? Yes, that is. It's when you are alone with yourself and your thoughts are really not even alone. It's when you're tapped in to your own energy, your own energy. Yeah. Like thoughts like that can come to you, mm -hmm. you know, and the more we get comfortable with that, the more shit like that will just keep down. It we'll just keep came. I said, listen we'll to keep me. Downloading. That's why I'm walking. You'll keep downloading. This is why I'm walking. I'm yeah. about to get on my walk. I'm just trying to figure out your route, my route win. and my win. Maybe the weekend. Maybe, maybe. Cause you be up hella early. You got to be to work early. Yeah. And I got to commute there, although my commute is not that bad now. I mean, I probably could. It would have to be like, girl, I'm out at 6 a.m. What time do you have to be at work? 8. Yeah. What time do you have to leave your house? 7.25. Oh, yeah. You could easily. Oh, well, you got to get dressed, too. Exactly. I was going to say, you could easily walk. I get up at 6.30. Uh -huh. I would have to be up at 5.50, out the door, 6 o'clock, walking for 30 minutes. Then it's going to be stressful. Then I'm not going to be able to Yeah, so it. you need to find a pocket where it fits more seamlessly. Yeah, it'll probably be a weekend thing. Another sign that you might be taking things too personally is that you don't set or maintain boundaries as a rule. Mm. Okay? <sighs> we know boundaries tell people how to treat us. And if you are letting people walk all over the boundaries that you have for yourself, or if your boundaries are extremely weak, then obviously you're going to be more prone to take things personally. Because guess what? People get to come all in your space. Mm -hmm. They get to do what they want to you. And you you don't really have any any say-so about it. 
So when people get to cutting up all in your energetic field, <laughs> seriously, then it's kind of like you you feel slighted. You feel, you know, you take things personally. No. But you created the environment for it. You created the Allowed environment the for environment. me to come in here and walk all over your ass. Yeah. Mm-mm. I have, a, you know, I shared this many times on the pod. There's boundaries that I had to impose with my mom because sometimes she just say whatever she wants to say. And I was taking what she said personally. Mm. And it's like, honestly, what I can do is just set the boundary. I'll set the stage that certain things are not up for discussion. There's certain critiques that I don't want to hear. And it's not that I don't want to hear. It's the way that you deliver it. And then I won't be feeling offended or right. I won't take what you say personally because we've already set the stage at when it's appropriate to tell me these certain things. The boundaries have to be firm in your life because you will feel upset. I was getting, we were having difficulties in head our relationship. Yeah. Head button. Because I'm like, okay. We some head button. <laughs> we were doing that. We, were, we, we occasionally would have moments where we're doing that and I'm like, it's because you are offending me. Yeah, I'm taking what you say personally and you are causing offense because my boundaries are not firm. That's so true. You definitely have to have the boundaries in place because I've noticed that with myself and with others when I'm like, it's easier to look from the outside looking in when you see when I see people taking things personally because they don't have boundaries. You mad because somebody (laughs) is deciding you're taking something the way somebody's deciding to live their life personally. Yeah. Because you don't have a boundary in between them coming to ask you for something to help live that life. Mm. You get where I'm going with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm getting it. Anyway. Yeah. Another sign that you may be taking things too personally is you're afraid to say no mm-hmm. to mm. requests. Yeah. Yeah. You, then you say Yes. And be upset. And be upset. And be upset. We have to say, we got to have to say some healthy no's. It's okay. It's okay to say no. It's okay to not be able to do it all for everybody every time. Yeah. You have to reserve your yeses for what it is that you really want to do and your no's for what you really don't want to do. It's oh motherfucking K. Okay. Another sign is that you believe all harsh comments about yourself and take them to heart right here. Your heart is beating with the negative. I I really had to get better with that being on this, being a public figure. Yeah. Because I would take the comment, the negative comments real personal. But you know what? I exercised this in one of our most recent viral posts. I just didn't read them. Yeah. You just got to turn it off. I I detached. I detached. I'm like, this is turned into something else. This don't even got nothing to do with me. Yeah. Y'all that, talking that's about- how I release it. I'm like, yeah, this is actually y'all post. This We just set the stage. Now y'all running rampant. In this. We actually have left the building. Yeah. And y'all still burning it down. Y'all still standing outside. We don't care no more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another one, you view a mistake in your behavior as a, as your own character flaw, as a character flaw. Mm-hmm. Mistakes are not necessarily character flaws it could just be a mistake now if you keep making it then that's another thing but if it's just you, right now Denier. but if it's like a one-off or something that happened because we're human and we make mistakes and we we should be allowed to make mm. mistakes we don't have to take that make it into a character flaw yeah okay uh, just give yourself some grace there yeah another sign is you get defensive or angry easily mm. Uh, I know a few people in my life who always are trying to prove their point, always want to be right, are always on the defense. You tell them something. If it doesn't go their way, then they're angry. You guys relax. Yeah. re fucking lax There's no need to be def- No one's out to attack you. That defense is always on, on guard, thinking that somebody's personally attacking you and that you have to defend yourself. And it's really okay to, we just talked about mistakes and errors, flaws. We're not always right all the time. We're just not. You don't know everything. You're not that knowledgeable, that insightful, where there's going to be something that someone shares with you that you've never heard or that when somebody does tell you something and it's wrong, you're trying to defend yourself as to why it could be right. Come on. Yeah, if it differs from how you think it should be. Sit down. Please. If you find yourself obsessing over recent conversation that that you've had to the point where it's affecting your behaviors, 
like you're ruminating over mm. like what I, what you said, how they responded, what you could have said differently. Yeah, replaying the conversation. In I've your done mind. that before. I've done Same. that before where I'm like, damn, did I sound stupid? Like I should have said, I could have articulated myself mm. better. I wish I would have had like you know these tools. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, do they think? <sighs> that sucks. It's that like sucks. it don't even be that deep. It don't even be that deep. Like, you know, so mm-hmm. we just have to release ourselves from that weight, especially like if a conversation happened, it's already, listen, it's already even it's happened. Go- yeah, it's, it's gone. said, It's done. Half the time, the conversations are with people that I probably won't even see again. So. And majority of the time, they don't remember what all you said anyway, because they're focusing on what they said. Right. I don't be like, they they said this and that. I, that really hurt. I could have ate them up with that. I just be thinking about <laughs> what I missed. I'm like, damn, I could have got that. I know, but I felt like that's some sometimes before like maybe not necessarily um exactly what i said but have you ever like left someone's company or energy and you're kind of like hmm, uh-huh. feeling yeah. kind of something yeah like did i say something yeah. that offended? did i rub them the wrong way did they like me yeah are we cool what's yeah. the vibe yes was it, like were they picking up what i was putting down are we good <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i yeah. hate that i hate that feeling i'm like oh fuck i hope i didn't come off some sort of way that's not good i know but that that it's really releasing our need to be the way we are perceived there's no control over it you know yeah it's, exactly. it's tough but i do know what you mean you know it's like i've done that for sure like oof. same what are some situations because we all take things personal we're not above this mm-hmm. that you feel like trigger you taking things personally I think any situation that I'm emotionally invested in, for the most part, I can do a good job detaching so I don't feel like I take a lot of things personally, except on that road. I told you. <laughs> on that, that road? When I'm on that road, when I'm on that road, but I've been doing so much better. Good. When somebody be, tra- you know, when shit be happening on the free, on the, on the highway or the street that I normally would be like, the fuck are you doing? And like, I told Brittany that me and this guy had like basically a, it felt like a standoff. She really scares me. She really scares me because people I know have really gotten hurt, white killed because of road rage. And I'm always like, Germany, they can have a gun. I can have one, but you don't. I know. <laughs> what the f- type of response is that? You don't. We know that you a don't have one. one. A defensive one because I want you to see my position. I understand. But y'all. At this, I literally was minding my business. I was getting on the on ramp. We were both merging. I had the right of way, and he comes running me off the road, practically, practically running me off the road. And I was like, "What the?" F-? So then we're like speeding to catch. I'm speeding to catch up with him because I'm like, "Oh, he got me f-ed up. He probably think I'm some." <laughs> who don't know how to drive motherfucker i'm coming for you so we literally the whole I hate, way i hate this so much. the whole way it's funny now but i'm like i gotta yeah, do it's better it's not funny i know i have to do i'm already i've already released it and i'm, I'm doing glad. better so we basically were going back and forth the whole time and and i only feel settled my blood pressure was only not boiling anymore once we went two different directions i'm like now i could be on this motherfucking highway and chill but lately I haven't even been getting attached to it. I'm like, you know what? They're driving that way. They made that decision to turn abruptly in front of me because they're just trying to get to where they're going. I take it I take it off of me. I'm like, it has nothing to do with me. They're not trying to, you know, it's no personal attack on me. They just doing what they doing. They trying to navigate and yeah, bend yeah, corners yeah, and shit. Yeah. So, but that, and when, like I said, I'm emotionally invested in a situation. You mentioned anything related to this, this, what we're doing here, this podcast. I don't want to hear no negative bullshit. <laughs> I'm open to constructive criticism, but negative bullshit. And it has to be packaged really good. Real, uh, well, right. I love be, you guys. I love, this. <laughs> I love this. I love what you're doing here. I could see you doing it better if you did this. Otherwise, baby, no. No. Taking a hell of a person. What about you? Yeah, because somebody can even be, can even give something like, you You do be taking a person. Somebody can be like, you guys should shorten up. And you're like, shorten up. <laughs> It's been working great this way. <laughs> it depends on who it's coming from. Things that trigger my tendency to take things personal um, that I feel like I've worked on, but there it, it pops up sometimes is when people have a different opinion. Like if I suggest something and they don't think it's a good idea and I'm like, oh, I kind of get defensive and like, you know, 
I take it a little personal. I, I feel like I take it personally because I feel like in that moment, I'm they're telling me that my idea is not good enough or mm-hmm. the way that I want to do something is not good enough. And that's not necessarily true. They can just think that, you know, there's another way or there's some there's an alternative. So that makes me take things. I take things personally with that. And I feel like sometimes this is warranted to take things personally because it did take it personal because it is personal. <laughs> what? When people say something about me that's not in the best light or they say something that like knocks me off of a pedestal, especially if it's a pedestal that they put me on. If they point out something like a flaw Mm -hmm. and I'm like, what the f*** you mean to tell me I'm not perfect? In your eyes. You mean to tell me that there's something that I'm doing wrong? How the f*** dare you? I'm supposed to be the best thing that ever happened to you. (laughs) shit you know what but, else uh, i take these personally when people are not on my side oh my god when yes. people are not on my yes. side I say, oh, this girl <sighs> be on my side that's all i want you to do and if you are not on my side is giving op you either with me or you not you either with me or you the against op me. is crazy you either with me or you against me i feel strongly about that and i've 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 learned no, I haven't gotten better with that. Because as soon as y'all be acting like an adversary, I'm like, y'all. So it's more than one. <laughs> it's whenever someone's not on my side. So that position and that's changes. So crazy. Sometimes it's on the rest of As a Libra you, girl who sees both sides like Chanel. I do see you both sides. You should be able to. I see both sides. I need y'all to see mine. I need y'all to see mine. That's it. I'm like, wow. And it's really based on the relationship. If we are, if we are best friends, Germany, but there's there's right and there's wrong. Now, as, as your best friend, no, I have to show you. Stand. You could just be quiet. That would let me know there's more solidarity than you being like, yeah. <laughs> How could you? It feels like a traitor. It feels like I'm being betrayed. And I don't like that. I don't like the feeling of betrayal. It's because I'm loyal. Betrayal. It feels like betrayal. The That's drama. What I'm saying. It feels. It feels. See, see, really, takes a personal. It's turned into betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like betrayal. Because I am loyal. I'm loyal. And I am. To a fault. If you, with if you, you side I'm with and you. wrong. I'm with, or, you. I'm with you. Wrong or right. I'm with you. I'm with you. And when somebody is just not on my side, I'm like, you are not a loyal motherfucker. I don't like it. You're and me. it does feel like betrayal to me. So now that I've told you, you you don't ever care. You'd be like, eh, I'm going to say what's right <laughs> and what's wrong. I, it's right or it's wrong. That's what you be on. Now, if somebody is, a, is a, you know, I'm with you when it really, when it's really something that you need me to be with you with. All the time. I have a question for you. Are you able to differentiate between personal attacks and, cri- and con- constructive criticism? Not all the time. Oh. Sometimes it all feels like in a motherfucking attack. Like you said, it depends on how yeah. it's delivered. It yeah. really depends Packaging. on how it's packaged. The delivery matters. The delivery matters all day because I do want people to let me know things. I don't want no yes men around me, you know, yeah. and I do want to make changes. If you notice something, please don't be quiet. No, please yeah, don't be sure. quiet. Please say something. I don't want to be out here looking like boo boo the foo foo. But sometimes it does feel like a personal attack, depending on how it's given to me. Yeah. And I think what makes it feel personal is like when people don't have the discernment to not just what you say, when you say it, how you say it, the tone you say it in. Yeah, all like, of that. <clears throat> wow. If I'm ready to hear it. <clears throat> Pardon me. She's a dry girl. Dry, dry, dry girl. frog in throat. Yes, that makes it feel like a, a critique. You know, and that's how I felt with my mom. I'm like, I don't feel like you're constructively criticizing me. Mm, you're just talking shit. Yeah. You're ragging me. Exactly. I'm like, girl, hold on. Yeah. Because you don't have to say everything that you're thinking. And that's what makes yeah. it feel like it's not constructive criticism. You weren't at, you at, weren't asked for your opinion, right? And you just letting it rip. Mm-hmm. It's giving very much to attack. Now I got my armor on. Yeah, you so know? it's safe to say that you taking things personally has affected your relationship. Better. Yeah, yeah. Like I shared earlier, it has. Now we're good. Yeah. Now, now I feel like as I've matured, as I've come into my own, I've made it very clear about what makes me feel good. What I don't like, what's best for the nature of our relationship, how we can coexist beautifully. And we've been on the same vibe. We've been on a good stretch wave. Mm, We've been on a good good frequency frequency since that retreat. 
We've been look good. at that. That was healing. Since the retreat. That was we've been healing. Good. And I and I feel like I'm not I'm not going to make it seem like I'm a saint. Like, I don't personally offend people because I'm sure there are certain things that I say where my mom feels attacked or people, you know, that I'm in relationship with might feel like, oh, I took that a little personally. Yeah. You know, but I always feel like there's space for communication and where we communicate, we're able to clear up the air on anything that you might feel that I've done, any offense that I might have caused. And, you know, I can apologize and we can make it better. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. So, you guys, stick around. We are going to keep talking about how to stop taking things personally right after this. So, let's get into why people take things personally because there's always a reason. Mm. There's always a reason. So, the first reason is... You may have some negative self-talk. Ooh, this one. Now, for some reason, a lot of us believe that we have to talk to ourselves negatively to motivate and encourage ourselves to get things done. The bitch off the street. (laughs) The bitch off the street. Yeah, we might constantly tell ourselves that we're not good enough or everything is our fault. So when we're telling ourselves that and when someone else makes a nasty or rude comment that we do not like... Mm -hmm. We'll believe it. Yeah. We're going to believe the negative things because you ain't telling me. Nothing they, that I don't yeah, know. Who you telling? Nothing that I haven't said. Who I, you I telling? Who are you telling? So yeah. the negative self-talk is a big reason. Yeah. Another reason, y'all, you know, childhood trauma, baby. Our childhood, the way we were raised, really this impacts us. the type us. of shit make you not want to have a kid. Listen. None what listen, trauma listen. you got? <laughs> <laughs> what trauma do you have while I was trying to raise you? (laughs) Listen, so the lack of emotional support in childhood, maybe being blamed by your parents for things, um, contributed to the feelings that we might deserve to be mocked or humiliated. You know, it's all, you know, yeah. It's like create when you're being raised in this environment where that's taking place, it's really hard to release yourself from patterns and behaviors that you learned as a child, Mm -hmm. but it's possible. Another biggie is poor Mm self-esteem. This one. People that have low self esteem um usually worry too much about what other people's what other people think. Mm-hmm. So of course you you think that you're taking it personal because you're worried about what they think. Now we're not gonna be on the far other end of the spectrum where we don't give a damn. Yeah. We should be giving a damn, but we don't gotta give it all. Mm. You know? Yeah. So and anxiety as well. Those of us who you know, are debilitated by anxiety or feelings of anxiousness are it's really hard for us to be judged and critiqued. We are really scared of it. It's giving, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, it's like I don't I don't even want anybody to say anything to me. We're so afraid of being judged and embarrassed and being cringe. <laughs> the cringe. I know another big one. And this one's personal is perfectionism. Mm. You may take things personally because you don't want other people to perceive anything that you do as having flaws or not being great. Um, There's this thing called social perfectionism, like really, really caring about how other people um, see and view the things that you do. And so if somebody says something because you care so much. This this one is hitting a nail on the head. Of course, you're going to take it personal. And that'd be me. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean something's wrong with it? Yeah. You're telling me? You're telling me? You have something to say? Oh, I made sure to put my <laughs> words together to the best of my abilities, and you still found a flaw. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> stress. Stressful. And stress. Stress or fatigue. When we're not in the best mood, it's really easy for us to take things yeah, personally. for sure. I'm stressed. I'm already running on low energy. I know that when I'm... Like, my cycle is coming. I'm not the nicest girly. I am, but I'm not. You're nice? On your period? Uh, No, I thought you were saying. You mean just in general? Around that time, I can be a little irritable. And yeah, like yeah. Things that people say, I might take it Short a little. Short fuse. Yeah, exactly. So we know stress, fatigue, not feeling our best, our mood fluctuates. We're going to probably be taking things more personally than we usually would. For sure. Definitely. And then lastly, um... Reasons why you may be taking things too personally is you're a highly sensitive girly. You have a high emotional sensitivity, our, our HSPs. 
And it's easy for you, baby. You feel everything. You feel every little thing, every little shift in the energy, every little move, every little groove. And it's like, hey. That'd what? be me, too. That'd I'm be like, you. You're like, there's something that happens. There's, there's different. I, I picked up on something. And I, I'm like, what are you Anytime picking up? Anytime I pick up on it, I'd be really picking it up. What the fuck are you picking up on? It'd be on the ground. Anytime I get to pick it up, it's already on the ground. I'm like, I knew and it. you, the thing is, you I can pick up on a shift, but, the, sh- but the, the shift that you're picking up on is not always because of something that you did. I know, but I be feeling it too. I'm like, oh, something's off here. I am this, this, this is definitely me. I am very emotionally sensitive, and because of it, I will. I'll feel it, and I'll be like, oh, yeah. Was there something I did or said, or is there something else going on in there? So you mentioned reading the Four Agreements, yeah, and the Four Agreements is by Don Miguel Ruiz. 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 Yeah, Ruiz. It's a Don classic. Miguel. It's a Ruiz. classic. It's a she can roll her tongue. <laughs> I cannot. But it's a classic quick read that has some core principles. And one of the agreements, the second agreement to be exact, is why we shouldn't take things personally. And I think this little excerpt is worth sharing. Let's get it. So whatever happens around you, don't take it personally. Nothing other people do is because of you. It is because of themselves. All people live in their own dream, in their own mind. They are in a completely different world from the one we live in. When we take something personally, we make the assumption that they know what is in our world and we try to impose our world on their world. Even when a situation seems so personal, even if others insult you directly, it has nothing to do with you. What they say, what they do, and the opinions they give are according to the agreements they have in their own minds. Taking things personally makes you easy prey for these predators, the black magician. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can hook you easily with one little opinion and feed you whatever poison they want. And because you take it personally, you eat it up. Even the opinions you have about yourself are not necessarily true. Therefore, you don't need to take whatever you hear in your own mind personally. Don't take anything personally because by taking things personally, you set yourself up to suffer for nothing. When we really see other people as they are without taking it personally, we can never be hurt by what they say or do. Even if others lie to you, it is okay. They are lying to you because they are afraid. Yeah. There is a huge amount of freedom that comes to you when you take nothing personally. You become immune to the black musicians and no spell can affect you, regardless of how strong it may be. The whole world can gossip about you. And if you don't take it personally, you are immune. Someone can intentionally send emotional poison, and if you don't take it personally, you will not eat it. When you don't take the emotional poison, it becomes even worse in the sender, not in you. Period. As you make a habit of not taking anything personally, you won't need to place your trust in what others do or say. You will only need to trust yourself to make responsible choices. You are never responsible for the actions of others. You are only responsible for you. When you truly understand this and refuse to take take things personally, you can hardly be hurt by the careless comments or actions of others. Bars. The 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 read was just mm. it's just a, a gentle reminder of everything that you really need to hear. It is. It's a gentle reminder, and that's why I've been able to flow better since reading this. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The last few weeks, it's like. Why am I taking things personally? Why am I letting people have that much power? power like I said, authority. you know, authority over what I feel the about way you're myself. Feeling, you, that that's true. You know, I'll get riled up real quick. Like, why are they acting like that? What did I do? No, it's not even. What did, what did you, you do? do? If you really did something, if you really did something, then self awareness will allow you to examine, take inventory. Take accountability, apologize, and move on. Right. But a lot of times, it's not that we did something when it comes to taking things personally. It's the way that our negative self-talk mm-hmm. is the way that we are so concerned about the way that we are perceived about um, from uh, you know perceived by other people that is ruling our lives and creating the stories and further perpetuating pushing the narrative. Yeah, and just like the the book says, we're all in our own dream, and. To think that you are impacting my dream and I am impacting your dream and all like that, that is crazy. We have to learn to decenter ourselves. And we furthermore, we have to learn how to decenter ourselves in other people's perspective and center ourselves in our own world. Mm-hmm. And when I say center ourselves in our own world, it's like only take in what you 
you know, really honoring yourself, the way you feel about yourself and trusting your inner voice that you're guiding yourself in the right direction, that you love yourself, that you really are being the best to yourself, the best friend to yourself. Yeah. Put yourself first up there and in here, in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, period. I'm taking care of me. That's what I'm doing this year. I'm taking care of me. I got to put me first, Lucius. I got to put, put me, me fucking first. first. And I really got to do that. You know what else we got to do? Take a quick break. We do. We're going to pop back the stick around. So we're here. We reached the point where we have some to-do list items mm -hmm. for you all. Some actionable items. Yes. Things that you need to do right now first being leave your rating and leave your review whether mm -hmm. you're listening on apple spotify google play where leave something yeah say some if you're words. taking something leave something next course of business is to share the podcast mm -mm -mm. like we said we're on a journey to continue to spread the message of what it is that we're doing here yeah, and that is only possible with your help we can't do it all, y'all. We're recording the content. We're taping it for you. We're editing it. We're doing all of the things. We need you to pick up your your pen. Pen. <laughs> pick up do your, your phone. Part. And do your do part. Do some. Do we some. need you to pick up your burden. We do. And share it. Listen, Drop it listen, in your group listen, chat. Because no, listen, I'm carrying this burden. Pick up home. your burden. I'm carrying all these burden telebricks. <laughs> okay. So, lastly. What you can do is join us in the Homegirl Hangout. So if you're one of the girlies who, like, you know, want more, there's an option for that. If you join mm -hmm. us in the Homegirl Hangout, you will definitely get more. The more that you will be getting is journal prompts that complement the episode. Yes. You'll get a bonus episode every month, which is similar to the episodes we release here on the platform. Even sweeter for the deal, you get to hear about what's going on in Germany and I's lives. You know, we, we, we gave out the details of trips dating experiences, thoughts on our yeah. mind, shit like that happens over there because people got to pay and then they ain't paying. So <laughs> some of them are, but they're less likely to pay. So it's safer to share. But that's where that is. It's in the home where hangout and that information is down in the show notes. Yes. Okay, so join us over there. Okay, girlies. So now we're going to get into the tools, your tools for your toolkit. We would not be the black girl bravado if we did not provide you with solutions. And the first thing that we have to do is know your worth and build your confidence. Mm. We just were talking about that. Without confidence, without a high self-esteem, it's easy for people to be able to come and impose their thoughts, have negative ideas about you, and you internalize it. Mm -hmm. And it influences how you feel about yourself. Of course, you're going to feel inferior because you don't have confidence. Right. That this this is the number one thing. That, that's the number one thing. That stops here. And just like we can't expect people to meet all of our standards, we can't expect people to take the responsibility of making us feel good mm. and no, building our confidence and, it, you know, reinforcing our worth. That's not their job. That's why it's called self-esteem. Listen, and it's the, the theme of the self. And it's going to be so hard to believe what other people think about you when you truly know and more importantly, like who you are. Yeah. It's going to be laughable. Like you are hella funny. Who? Yeah. I'm laughing at you saying these comments <laughs> because <laughs> I'm laughing because ain't no way. Yeah. Ain't no way. You're delusional. Right. So having the self-confidence and knowing your worth is the foundation of of which all of our things are built upon mm -hmm. our achievements <clears throat> our relationships our ability to keep going mm -hmm. fighting to see another day this matters we got to stop sleeping on this this really does matter mm -hmm. so next we're going to consider the source now this this is this is this this this, is this, standard. this this yeah does the critique come from someone that you like yeah. know or even respect yeah or is this coming from a person that bitch is, off the street? The way we all keep using bitch off the street, you know, or they've had very little interaction with you, or maybe they have had interaction, but you already know that what they say means very little. I remember yeah. one time, They're not that credible, them damn sales. This that I knew, we were out to CP, CPK, me, Kayla, and the college days. Yeah. You don't got to get me to talk. And 
we were out having our little whatever dinner eating and this man had made several advances that I just wasn't interested in him like that you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying so at the restaurant I guess I had made a comment about something I don't know what topic it was on I don't know what I said but the way that I the the comment he didn't like it he's gonna tell me you you be acting like you light skin your attitude is like you're like a light skin girl and I'm 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 like what did you say what did you say? I was like, what the fuck does that mean? I'm like, what oh, does that mean? Gosh. I'm acting like I'm a light-skinned girl. How how should I be acting in your eyes? Like, you know, what would be a more appropriate way for me to act as a person who's not light-skinned? He was like, it's just like you just have this air about you. And I'm like, bitch, what? And he was so serious. And I could have really internalized that, but I had to I had to consider the source. Yeah. I had to consider the source. I had to consider the source. Who is saying this? And is it true? No, I'm not acting. Well, how I'm acting has nothing to do with my skin tone. Anyway, Oof. you'll take your criticism very differently when it's presented to you from someone that you care and that yeah. you trust and that you know has your best interest at heart mm-hmm. versus somebody that's ignorant like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're going to take it differently. Even another example is like someone yelling from you or getting crazy with you in traffic. They don't know you. Yeah, I know. You know, they really don't know you. Everybody's probably stressed about getting up late, getting on the road or dealing with, you know, what comes with driving. I know. So just do that when you think about how you need to react. Yes. You know? Yeah. Who is this? Who is this even coming from? And that's something that I'm also taking into consideration when people are leaving their comments on social media. Yeah. Look at the source. Half of them be behind fake pages. The other half just talking. Don't got really ain't saying nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Another solution is to question your negative beliefs. When we take things personally, it's often because we hold a negative belief that's fueling our perception of the situation, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you say, hey, girl, to somebody who's walking in the hall and they don't see you, if you say, hey, and they don't say, hey, back, then you know what you're going to think? They're ignoring me. They don't fuck with me no more. They don't fuck with me. They're rude. You know, you start to create all of these ideas that, You already have a negative belief about yourself. And Mm -hmm. now you're allowing that situation to perpetuate the feeling that you already have. Yeah. Take a step back. Examine where that is even coming from. You know, where where is it that I feel like, okay, they ignored me. I'm not worth saying hi to. They're rude. Where is that? Where is that coming from? Yeah, because a lot of the times we don't even take the time to question our thoughts and beliefs. Listen. You know, like you said, they, they, she could have not seen you. Could have been wrapped up in their own dream, mm-hmm. in their own reality. Busy, thoughts, stress, thinking about something else. That happens all the time. I'll be like, hey, or somebody will say hey to me. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I didn't even see you there. Actually happened. I was walking through the cafeteria at my, at my job and they were like, a group of colleagues were all sitting it down. And I was like, so intently on my phone. And they were like, well, fine, you don't have to speak. And I was like. I'm sorry. Guys. You didn't see. I you. said I'm so. I'm right. So, I'm so here. It has nothing to do with y'all. Y'all are great. Right. And I think that I could have also took it personally, like thinking, <clears throat> how do they think that I? How you are? How, how you I feel am? About them, yeah. Right. Like I didn't want to sit down and eat with them. It's not that. But I was like, honestly, y'all, I'm wrapped up in my own shit. I've I've gotten this one about like I have RBF. Like yeah. my my natural face is resting face is not yeah. like you know a smile. It's just like, and people have said that they thought that I was rude, not because of something that I've done mm-hmm. to them or said, but just because like my posture and my face. I'm like, but I'm not. Yeah, you're not. I'm not. You're not. And and another thing is like our beliefs can help have us misinterpret situations. You know, it's not what we think it is always. So take a step back take a beat and then approach yeah you know and then approach it's really being intentional we have to question our thoughts and our beliefs because the thing about the mind baby it'll do it go it could go it'll take you some places and you have to keep it in check you you have to keep it in check you do you have you have to really have it by the yeah um okay another tip is to to ask for clarification so Mm. When there is a situation that you have the opportunity to do this, you definitely should. If it's like somebody that you know and you can ask them, hey, somebody made you feel bad. 
get clarification. Like, um, you know, I, I kind of took that personally. Did you mean this? Yeah. Like when you said that I felt this kind of way, like what was your intention there? Because many times we perceive a situation negatively and the person didn't intend to hurt us at all. And so when we get the clarification, they're like, girl, I'm, I will definitely rework the way that I come yeah. at you or say things because that wasn't my intention at all. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to change instead of just assuming that, you know, it was fuck you because of the way that I said something. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, don't let your thoughts just spin off into that negative direction when you do have the opportunity to ask, ask for clarity. I know sometimes we don't, but the times that we do, we should definitely take advantage of them. Communication is so key. And, and like you said, when you're close with somebody or even if you're not close with somebody but specifically when you are in a relationship with somebody and there's something that's done to you know create offense or you take things personally definitely ask them what they meant or or rather share with them how you feel right that's what it really is you know share with them how you feel I remember when Adrian and I hadn't talked for all that time I was really like what is it was it me was it something I did why doesn't she want to be friends anymore but when it's really like she was having her own experience that had nothing to do with me. I wasn't at the focal point of it at all. Right. And it's like when we finally got a chance to talk, then that was able to be disclosed, but only through communication and say, this is how I felt when that happened. And it's like, I didn't mean to make you feel that way at all. I was going through this. Yeah. So definitely talk. Another thing that we're doing is accepting that we're all different. Yeah, we are. And not everybody needs to like you. That's really it right there. That's the key. You might be taking things personally because you think that it's going to give you a greater chance of getting someone's approval. They'll like me, you know, if I do this. Yeah. But truly, y'all, everybody on the planet, they're not going to like you. And if they do, you fake. <laughs> if every single person likes you, there's some yeah. inauthenticity going on. Yeah. And instead of trying to change yourself so that you are being liked just show up authentically show up authentically be yourself be kind you know and let the cookie crumble where it's going to crumble how it's going to crumble because people who want to be around you are going to be around you for whatever the right reason showing up is a version of yourself that you are not is going to have you it's fake. down bad it's fake and then you're going to end up taking things personally another re reason because we're showing up as a version of ourselves that we're not and people are treating us accordingly Mm. you know and we're not feeling it we're not feeling it no lastly the golden rule <laughs> <laughs> this is a tip damn near for everything practice some self-compassion yeah we often are beating our own asses here we're beating our own asses like we have to stop doing that because even though there are some things that people do that offend us we don't we get to decide how we let that behavior affect us. Yeah. We get to decide how far we want to take it if we want to do the dash on it or not. Mm -hmm. So let's give ourselves some compassion for the things that are gonna inevitably happen. You know, living yeah. in this life. We're gonna find some things offensive to where it's like, wow. But you don't have to stay there. Because what did Don say? Y'all go back and listen. I don't know. What did she say? Don Miguel. Oh. Don, <laughs> not that. Don from Danity Kane. I was waiting on a song. I'm like, what did she say? What no, did she say? No, Don Miguel. Yeah, Don Miguel Ruiz. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to take the negative comments to heart. We have to stand up in the fight of our life. You say, I'm not going to let that in. I'm not letting that in. It can be water on the duck's back. Repel. Yeah. <laughs> Repel it. Roll off. Yeah. Roll off. So. <clears throat> I like it. There's one twist here. <laughs> there are There's a caveat. Yeah, there is a caveat. Ca caveat. Caveat. <laughs> caveat. 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 Shit, I'm caveat. <laughs> There's a caveat, caveat here. Well, wait. There's a caveat. It's words like that that come over to the English language that don't have no business being here like accoutrement. There's certain <laughs> words that's just like, why are we using it? But there's a caveat. The way. Caveat. 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 Bring it, bring it, caveat. Okay. The way we say accoutrement. <laughs> it's one of my faves. My eyes are there, there's, 
one little caveat here. The Coutremont. <laughs> there are some positive <laughs> stop aspects to taking things personally, okay? Yeah. What are By they? taking things personally with your family and friends and those that you're in close relationship with, you can become better equipped and cued into what hurts you more in tune with you know your feelings your emotions and the knowledge that you can communicate to them so that they can modify their behavior to not offend you yeah that's been a dynamic in our relationship yeah hey i want to let you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you offended me when you said this so can we not do that shit again (laughs) please let's not do it you got to do that it's also very humanizing and humbling for our feelings to get hurt every now and then. Yeah. When I hear those things about myself that bring me down to reality, like, girl, you have some things that you can improve upon. Yeah. You know, you can you can do better. So, Love it. It only helps make us more resilient in the future. With tears in my eyes. Okay, y'all, it is time to transition to our final um, segment of the show. I did that shit. Oh. So this is the part of the show where we get to share little things that we're, you know, that we've done you can also use the homegirl hotline to share things that you are doing you Mm -hmm. can drop any gems there Mm -hmm. i also want to say also 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 we give advice the homegirl hotline is the place where you can send us any stories or anything that's happening where you would like us to weigh in on you know we'll share here on the show it's always anonymous but that's what that uh, line is there for so i did that shit i told y'all i was in miami for a little bit and I went to a dinner that was hosted by kids of immigrants and kids of immigrants in Amazon and the whole brand mission and identity of the KOI is support your friends. Right. So they created this beautiful dinner, beautiful tablescape of a bunch of friends, people who are all coming together from various industries and walks of life that they wanted to network and get to know each other. So y'all, they had a seated chart, you hate a, a seated seat. chart. And I was not seated next to the person I came with, which was my boo. Mm-hmm. So when I walked up and I see my name and I didn't see Andres's name next to it, I'm like, now what the hell? Is it an error on the I'm show? like, do they know that I am your plus one? Because right. I don't see, right. we are a package. So then Danny was like, yeah, you know, we just want to have everybody. I was like, oh, I started melting. <laughs> I started melting. I said, now I'm about to have to be up in here talking to people I don't know. Um, but it worked out. Because it was an opportunity for me to lean in and do what it is that I say that I want to do, which right. is get better at conversing, you know, networking, just having small talk and, you know, building building stronger connections. So, and another thing was, I'm glad we didn't take this. Danny was like, I could put y'all together. Like, I could do a quick little switcheroo if y'all want to be together. I'm like, nope, don't do that on our account. You know, Andres was cool with it. He was like, it's all good. I'm not tripping. And I was like, I need to lean into that. Yeah, I need you to lean need into to the I'm not tripping. And, yeah. And even if I am tripping, like, like you said, lean in. It's okay. So I sat next to, I ended up sitting next to somebody I know, but only because the person he was sitting next to wanted to do a switcheroo because she was not sitting with her husband. Uh-huh. So I was like, it's cool. But it was an opportunity for us to talk more more yeah you know and just like explore he's on a sober journey right now he's not mm-hmm. drinking and it was nice for me to get insight into that he had a cocktail and i'm like oh and he's like a mocktail you gotta throw him off and i'm like <laughs> you know it's just it was re- refreshing and nice to have like just dinner conversation i sat next to another young lady who was easy to talk to she wasn't supposed to be there. Her friend was supposed to be there. He decided not to come to the dinner, told her to go in his oh. place. He didn't know it was a dinner. She didn't know it was a dinner. So when she showed up, didn't know she nobody. Was she was like her. looking for his name and then just sat down in his spot. But it was funny, you know, and she was just chatting it up and it was a good time. Yeah. So I feel really good about having those types of challenges and opportunities to, again, do the things that I say I want to do. And when it shows up, do leaning it. into it. Not being like, yeah. I'm proud of you. Because that's how we change. So That is. You, you got to do it. You got to flex the muscle. That's baby. how we enter a new era. This is how we reinvent ourselves. This is how we become that girl. Listen. Little by little. That's how you do it. Left, so. right. Let me see you do it. Do it, right. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
And that's that on that, y'all. Yes. Okay. It's been good. We're starting off the year strong. We are. We hope y'all are really loving the episodes. Let us know in the comments. Let us know by sharing. sharing. That's yep. how you let us know. Once let it's us know shared, by sharing. We know. If it's not shared, we're questioning. Yeah. And we don't, don't want to take question. it personal. We don't want to take you into interrogation. Yeah. So let's do our part. We love y'all so much, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.